Hello, you're here today. It's Ward 5 in 10, and we might be a little extended. I have a special guest today, Senator Brady, our state senator, and we're here to talk about a couple of things. I'm Ann Borgard, the Ward 5 City Councilor, 774-297-4939, or a Borgard at cobma.us. It's Wednesday, October 17th, 2018. It's a little breezy out here. The temperature is a lot uh, different than it was one month ago when we were inside the studio and we were talking about how everyone was back at school. Now we're talking about the fact that it's important for you to check your uh, smoke detectors, your carbon monoxide detectors. We're getting ready to change the clocks and we're getting ready for a very important election. That's why we have Senator Brady here today. I want to let people know there's many services out there as this weather changes. Please do not hesitate to contact someone or myself. I don't have all the answers, but maybe I can connect you with someone that will be able to help you when it comes to fuel assistance and other necessities. There's no reason for any of you to be too cold or, too, or hungry at this time of the year. So please, I can be reached at 774 Four two nine seven four nine three nine. There's a whole lot of great stuff going on, and please be careful out there, all of you working on your yards and going out in the woods. We have to be careful of the ticks. They're still around. They, for some reason, don't suffer from the cold weather like the rest of us. So, uh, without further ado, Senator Brady, thank you for being here today, and I'm going to pass the microphone over to you. Thank you, Council. I'm glad to be here, and uh, I want to be grateful to the Ward 5 Council from the Fighting Fifth in the City of Champions here. I represent the whole city as well as several other towns outside of the city of Brockton. But today we're talking about Ward 5 because across the street, the Ganley Building. And it um, was supposed to be at one point a college collaboration. Uh, the new administration came and it was going to be a collaboration with UMass, Bridgewater State, Mass Lloyd. That got put on the back burner. So then the administration and the governor's office come up with Plan B, working with the local officials to tear down the building and build a new uh, unemployment office here. So we secured over $23 million to tear down the building, build a whole new building. And the bidding process got put on hold. There is a you joining building with uh, old Joe Angelo's across the street and the Ganley building. So they have to make sure that is secure when they do take it down. But it's supposed to be now for the fall of 2019 and then the spring of 2020. They talked to us about it, constructing the new building. We would have liked to see things done more quickly, but it was in the, this year's budget. So another important thing, we got some money, a couple million dollars, to raise and demolish some other existing depleted buildings in the city of Brockton, specifically for our downtown. And as we all know, the downtown has been the core and the heart and soul of the city. And if we don't have a good downtown, it's going to affect the whole city. We have got funding coming into Brockton. We got some money for the uh, courthouse, a uh, very good amount of money for the Superior Courthouse to renovate that as well. They were talking about moving and closing the Superior Court. We met with our state officials, with DCAM and the powers that be at the state level. That's right around the corner, two courthouses. We have the District Court up the street here, and we have the Superior Court. And it's very important we keep both alive and up and running because they are two feet from each other, and they're in the heart of downtown. And we were able to get funding to keep our DA's office downtown with with existing state troopers in that downtown, which is important. That's another so-called federal building that was privately owned, but we were able to work out some renovations for that and get some funding for that through the state to keep the district attorney's office downtown in Brockton, as well as to put some state troopers downtown. So that'll help to alleviate some of the worries in our downtown. And again, it makes sense. It's two feet from the two courthouses. We also got some money from Mass Lake Community College. Now, unfortunately, under the past administration, we were hoping to get a new Allied Health Center built where the old Cristo site is. It's an empty block now. It's a very unfortunate as a gateway coming in from the east side. But we were able to get some money to renovate the Life Science Center building in the Mass Lake campus itself and another building there. So that helps to renovate them and upkeep them and bring them up to speed with the 21st century. So very important. But 
We have not given up on the Christo site. It's an empty block. It's not any earning any tax revenue for the Commonwealth and for the city of Brockton. We need to do something with that piece of property. Uh, unfortunate as well that the um, conference center closed recently too. And we need to have a function facility for people to go. You know, not everyone can afford it. It's great we have Thorny Lee, but that doesn't have the capacity as these other places. And the Shaw Center as well has been closed. Uh, we've had to have some other events outside the city. So we need to get these facilities up and running. Fortunate working with our state delegation, our local officials such as Council Du um, Beauregard and Representative Dubois who represents Eastside and, and Representative Cassidy and Representative Claire Cronin, we were able to secure some important funding for Massillon Community College to get those existing buildings renovated. So our work is not done. We still got a lot of work in the city of Brockton to do. And the proper event was good for downtown as well. And they're hoping to relocate because there's a new building going in just up the street from here. So we're hoping to keep that downtown for future events as well. So I want to thank you, uh, Councilor Beauregard, for all your work. You always have done the hands-on approach back from way back. And you're part of the so called fighting fifth that many predecessors before us, the Credans and Brophies and everyone else who served as a Ward 5 counselor, you are sitting in some good shoes and some tough shoes to fill, but thank you for all the work you are doing as well. Well, thank you, Senator. I just got a couple of quick things. We're going to ask you to give some information on how people can get a hold of you because you have a team in your office that's ready to serve individuals with particular concerns and just maybe a little run through of maybe a bill or, or some issue that's in the House uh, and the Senate that uh, we want to, you know, see passed. So if I could ask you to follow up with that. Thank you. Well, my phone number at the office is 617-722-1200. 617-722-1200. It's michael.brady at masenate.gov. That's my email. And we've passed a lot of good initiatives, got some extra funding for Brockton for the schools, but it was not enough. There was an education bill that still didn't get finalized. We're going to have to refile that legislation coming up in the new semester. Our school system does fantastic, despite what uh, happens at other communities. <coughs> Brockton is far and above a lot of school systems around the district, but without the funding from the Commonwealth, the state, and the local funding, we wouldn't survive. We were hoping to get some education funding passed in the legislation this past year. Not everything got done the way we wanted to, so we're working with local community leaders to get more funding done in the upcoming session, which will start January 1st. It's so important for our school system, and I want to thank all the educators in Brockton and all the public officials because they do a great job here, and uh, I'm honored to be your state senator. Thank you very much, Senator, for coming out this way. We appreciate it. We know you're always thinking of us. Again, the Senator's number is 617-722-1200. People need to understand you reach out to your elected officials. They try to help you every way they can. We don't always have all the answers, but a lot of times we can connect you to the people that do, and that's what we're out here for. Okay, let's remember, I'm Ian Borgard, the Ward 5 City Councilor, 774-297-4939, aborigard at cobma.us. We're thanking the Senator for being here. We're reminding everybody, vote on uh, Tuesday, November 6th, or get out there and vote earlier. Yes. Yes, and we did pass legislation so you can do early voting, and that's very important. I've talked to a lot of our friends and constituents that had already voted early, and it's more accessible and easy for the constituents to vote early because I know their lives are very busy with everything going on. So early voting has passed, and it's available for the constituents as well. And November 6th is the election day, so thank you. Thank you again, everybody. Be safe and uh, have a great Halloween.